on World News Tonight. Nuclear alert. Citizens hold its breath as Russian President Vladimir Putin announces even more lethal threats, claiming defense against resistance from Ukraine. Economic pressure. The European Union and allies across the globe continue to further restrict Russia's actions as financial sanctions surpass any amount previously fathomed. Will the actions deter Putin? Find out tonight. Supporting Ukraine. Protesters from countless countries stand in solidarity against the actions of Russia. Ukrainians plead for peace as citizens abroad grow restless of violence in their homelands. Traditional charm. Bolivia connects with its roots as streets fill with carnival goers dressed in a splash of color. This is Adaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with breaking news. Amid the mounting tensions, Ukraine announced that a delegation from the country have agreed to meet with Russian officials for talks which is currently underway. But the Kremlin's ultimate aims in Ukraine and what steps might be enough to satisfy Moscow remained unclear. Putin is putting up the pressure against Ukraine as the Russian president has confirmed preparations for a nuclear approach to the conflict. This comes mostly in response to what he claims to be a barrage of Western reprisals. Russian President Vladimir Putin put Russia's nuclear arsenal on high alert on Sunday, further raising the stakes amid his military assault on Ukraine. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky remained defiant, pledging to remain in the capital, Kiev. Zelensky said on Sunday he'd agreed to new negotiations without preconditions with Moscow, even though he didn't hold out much hope. I do not really believe in the outcome of this meeting, but let them try so that later not a single citizen of Ukraine has any doubt that I, as president, tried to stop the war. Yeah. Ukraine said it continued to hold off Russian forces from capturing Kiev and Kharkiv, its two largest cities. Footage showed of a Russian armored personnel carrier outside Kharkiv, where locals said at least one Russian soldier had been killed. An unexploded Russian warhead landed in a kindergarten playground. In Kiev, streets were deserted except for civil defense forces and the occasional ambulance. Plumes of smoke showed where Russian ordnance landed. Nearly 400,000 Ukrainian civilians have fled the country into neighboring Poland and Romania. The Russian invasion came after months of denials by Moscow. It planned to attack. Putin has called the attack a, quote, special operation. Western nations responded to the onslaught with an unprecedented array of sanctions on Russia's economy. Our airspace will be closed to every Russian plane, and that includes the private jets of oligarchs, too. The European Union on Sunday shut all Russian planes out of its airspace. Putin thrust an alarming new element into play when he ordered Russia's deterrence forces, which wield nuclear weapons, onto high alert. A U.S. defense official said Washington was trying to assess what Putin's announcement meant in tangible terms, but that it increased the danger from any miscalculation. Meanwhile, on the ground, Ukrainians continue to be defiant to Russian forces as the country successfully resists troops trying to enter the capital city. However, military forces have been exhausting in efforts to defend. It may be a matter of time before the tide turns. Tonight, as Ukraine tries to fend off missile attacks and relentless shelling, a possible shift between the two sides. Ukraine and Russia agreeing to hold negotiations on the border of Belarus. Their security guaranteed by Belarusian strongman and Putin ally Alexander Lukashenko. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky doubting the outcome but hoping for peace. For now, Ukrainian soldiers managing to stop Russian advances on Kyiv. But new images appear to show growing Russian ground forces pushing towards the capital. Russia still targeting Ukraine's infrastructure. A missile strike at an oil depot near Kyiv lit up the night sky. And in Kharkiv, an explosion at a gas pipeline as more heavy fighting broke out in the streets. Tanks burning alongside the roads. Fighters surrounded by destruction. The path of war marked by bombed out vehicles, charred roads and buildings blown out. This resident saying, my friend lives here, so I came to check. It is very bad. 
innocent civilians caught in the crosshairs. This nine-story apartment building shelled. Civilians helping civilians any way they can. Their homes destroyed. One woman died. 20 people were rescued from the rubble as dozens more hid out in safety. The death toll is rising. At least 350 people have been killed, more than 1,500 injured. Still, the citizens of Ukraine are resolute. And so many Ukrainians spent another night underground in bomb shelters and subway stations. With more international help rolling in in the form of supplies and weapons, Ukrainians are bracing for another bloody night. To better aid Ukraine in fighting the Russian troops, the leaders of the EU have slapped even more hefty sanctions on Russia, continuing to renew their stance of disagreement. In the matter, the bloc claims it has the power to stifle even more funds heading to the country. As Russia continues its assault on Ukraine, Western leaders are hardening their economic resolve against Putin. The US, Canada, Europe and Britain moved on Saturday to block some Russian banks from SWIFT, the main global payment system. The new measures will be implemented in the coming days and include restrictions on Russia's central bank. The West wants to prevent Putin from accessing $630 billion in foreign currency reserves he could use to finance his war and prop up a plunging ruble. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the measures prevent Russia from using its war chest. We are resolved to continue imposing massive costs on Russia, costs that will further isolate Russia from the international financial system and our economies. Putin embarked on a path aiming to destroy Ukraine, but what he is also doing, in fact, is destroying the future of his own country. Cutting Russian banks out of the SWIFT system does a blow to Russian trade. It makes it harder for Russian companies to do business. SWIFT, or the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, is a secure messaging network that facilitates rapid cross-border payments. It has become the principal mechanism for financing international trade. Each year, trillions of dollars are transferred using the system. The Allies on Saturday also pledged to limit the sale of citizenship via so-called golden passports used by some wealthy Russians to gain residency in Western nations. While diplomatically, countries around the globe have been rejecting Russia's offense, the controversial country now faces economic pressure from business partners as a result as well. BP, a global energy giant, is now pulling its stakes from Russian oil companies in response to the country's actions. BP is offloading its 20% stake in Russian oil giant Rosneft due to the crisis in Ukraine. It's one of the first major moves by a big company after the invasion, and it's a rapid, costly end for BP to nearly three decades of operating in Russia. Losing Rosneft means BP loses around half of its oil and gas reserves, and the British company says it will take a financial hit of up to $25 billion. In a Sunday statement, BP chief executive Bernard Looney said, quote, I have been deeply shocked and saddened by the situation unfolding in Ukraine, and my heart goes out to everyone affected. It has caused us to fundamentally rethink BP's position with Rosneft. Looney and his predecessor, Bob Dudley, will both step down from the board of Rosneft. BP is Russia's biggest foreign investor, and its move puts a spotlight on other Western companies with operations there, including France's Total Energies and Britain's Shell. It also underscores growing pressure from Western governments on companies to cut back Russian operations. Russian news agencies reported that Rosneft have blamed BP's decision on, quote, unprecedented political pressure. Also on Sunday, Alphabet and its YouTube unit were told by a top EU official to ban users pushing war propaganda as part of measures to put a stop to disinformation about Ukraine. Alphabet already barred RT and other Russian state media from getting money from ads on their websites and YouTube channels. Demonstrations were held in more Canadian cities to show off solidarity with Ukraine, which marked the fourth day of Russia's wide-ranging invasion. We have other than the world news special correspondent Joshua Samaranaika from Ontario in Canada. Joshua? Yes, Shanali. Russia's ongoing attack has promoted condemnation by many world leaders and triggered a raft of sanctions. Many Canadians gathered as well to show their support for Ukraine. Protests against Russia's invasion have been held around the world in recent days, 
including Russia itself, where police cracked down on protesters. Thousands of people marched in downtown Toronto to protest the Russia invasion of Ukraine. The event billed as Mega March for Ukraine was organized by the Toronto branch of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland, who represents Toronto's university, Rosedale Riding Federally, was among those attending the rally. In Hamilton, hundreds attending a solidarity rally where people waved Ukrainian flags and held signs calling for the world to stand with Ukraine as people driving by showed their support by honking. Thousands of Ottawa residents gathered outside the Russia Embassy in Sandy Hill to stand united with Ukrainians and protest Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The ongoing demonstrations taking place in Canada echo the sentiments of those opposing the war around the globe. In Russia, police detained more than 2,000 people at anti-war protests in 48 cities across the country. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. And that was Adhita in a World News Special Correspondent Joshua Samaranaika reporting from Ontario in Canada. Trump may be back on track to running for presidency yet again as he placed a comfortable lead in the CPAC votes in Florida. To further his claims, Trump has condemned Russia and the Biden administration for its incompetence. This weekend, conservative activists and politicians gathered for their annual conference in Orlando, headlined by former President Trump. It's great to be back where it all started. Some talking tough on Russia. Make no mistake, Putin is a killer. He wants to rebuild the Russian empire. But days earlier... I said, this is genius. I have enormous respect for him. But now, with the full-scale invasion underway in Ukraine, a change in tone. Trump now offering praise for Ukraine's President Zelensky. He is a brave man. He's hanging in. He's a brave man. But still criticizing the Biden administration and NATO allies. They're not so smart. They're looking the opposite of smart. The incursion, as Trump teases a 2024 White House run. We did it twice, and we'll do it again. Other potential 2024 contenders also attending, like Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, and Ron DeSantis, who opened the conference. Let me welcome you to the freest state. And a straw poll of attendees here, giving Trump the sizable hypothetical edge over DeSantis. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. As Russia and Ukraine continue to take the spotlight in terms of global conflict, it may be that North Korea is gearing up for further plans as well, as latest missile tests conducted by the country have been reported to be a reconnaissance satellite system for monitoring activities. North Korea claimed that its latest missile test on Sunday was for developing a reconnaissance satellite system. That's according to state news agency KCNA on Monday, which also published two photos showing the Korean peninsula seen from space. KCNA didn't elaborate further, but authorities in South Korea said the launch appeared to be a ballistic missile and flew to a maximum altitude of around 390 miles. Seoul said it was fired from an area near the North's capital Pyongyang, where its international airport is located. Developing a military reconnaissance satellite is among a number of advancements leader Kim Jong-un called for last year, including recently tested hypersonic weapons. Sunday's launch was their eighth test this year. The test drew international condemnation. And officials in South Korea and Japan expressed concern that North Korea could forge ahead with missile developments banned by the UN Security Council. North Korea has previously successfully placed at least two satellites in orbit, the last one in 2016. However, neither of those are believed to be working. Australia is in deep waters as the country has faced unprecedented amounts of rainfall, leading to large parts of major cities to be submerged under flash floods, leaving some rendered helpless. Let's cross over to other than a world news special correspondent, Katya Fernando, who joins us now from Melbourne in Australia. For more, Katya. Yes, Shanali, the flooding in Brisbane and its surrounds is the worst since 2011, when the city of 2.6 million people was inundated by what was described as once-in-a-century event. 
Queensland Emergency Services warned life-threatening flash flooding was occurring in parts of Gold Coast. Emergency crews made more than 130 swift water rescues in 24 hours. All eight flood deaths have been in Queensland state, of which Brisbane is the capital. Police were also searching for a man missing from Goodna, west of Brisbane, and another Esk, northwest of Brisbane. The Brisbane River peaked at 3.85 metres. Queensland Transport Minister Mark Bailey said major roads had been cut. Train and ferry services across Brisbane have been halted. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adha Dharana World News Special Correspondent Katya Fernando reporting from Melbourne in Australia. Americans are easing their masks back down as the CDC has decided on nationwide break for mask guidelines. Citizens are now able to remain maskless indoors at most institutions. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Friday dramatically eased its guidelines for mask wearing indoors, including in schools. The move means that 72% of the population will reside in communities where indoor face coverings are no longer recommended. The new masking guidelines shift focus from the rate of COVID-19 transmission to hospitalizations, hospital capacity, and infection rates as the wave of infections caused by the easily spread Omicron variant subsides substantially in the U.S. The CDC said universal school masking would now be advised only in communities with a high level of COVID-19. The earlier recommendation advised masking in schools no matter the level of COVID transmission. States such as New Jersey have announced plans to lift indoor mask mandates for schools and other public places in the coming days. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky said during a media briefing that travelers will still need to wear masks on airplanes, trains and buses and at airports and train stations for now. Those requirements will expire on March 18th and the CDC will revisit them in the coming weeks, she said. The continued spread of the Omicron COVID-19 variant has caused an increase in the number of confirmed cases at workplaces in South Korea. In response, companies in South Korea are now putting their own guidelines in place to strengthen quarantine measures. The measures include providing self-test kits for employees as well as making working hours more flexible. South Korean companies are now setting up quarantine guidelines proactively based on their own needs. To encourage more companies to autonomously manage virus preventative measures, the government is also recognizing companies that have done a good job, as was the case for this mid-sized semiconductor company. All employees are given four self-diagnosis kits every week, and one test must be taken and result reported Sunday evening. Any symptomatic signs require the employee to then follow the company's quarantine guidelines. Particularly in lines of work where even a single confirmed case or the absence of staff can have a greater impact on production, companies are implementing stricter guidelines, including requiring more, if not all, interactions from meetings to seminars to be held virtually, as well as increasing working virtually from home. Mask wearing is enforced at all times, while visitors are restricted. As government-mandated guidelines are being eased, companies are following them as a minimum requirement but taking further action as they see fit, regardless of the type or size of the business. This is perhaps a step closer to a more normalized life as we adapt to living with COVID-19. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Succession and Ted Lasso took home the top television prizes at the Screen Actors Guild Awards in Los Angeles in ceremony attended by Hollywood's biggest stars. Four months after the construction of the Shiva Pet Veterinary Hospital began on the outskirts of capital San Salvador in El Salvador, the medical facility opened its doors to serve Salvadorian pet owners. One of Brazil's biggest derby matches was cancelled shortly before kickoff after players from Grêmio were hurt when fans attacked their team bus on the way to the game against city rivals Intercontinental. The world's largest cargo plane, the Ukrainian-made Antonov 225 Maria, has been burnt in a Russian attack on Hostomel Airport near Kyiv. Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs tweeted that Russia may have destroyed their Maria, but they shall prevail.
And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed any of the stories we add tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with a splash of color from Bolivia as a traditional carnival fills up streets with joy. Thank you for watching us again. Have a good night.